Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and today we're going to solve another engineering problem. This is Lecture 9 of EGN 3214, Programming for Engineers. And I know we've been working with Python all the way along, and by the way, we're going to continue working with Python, but now we're going to use a different tool. So if you installed the Anaconda from, from the website, you would have noticed, oh my gosh, I've got this other tool called Jupyter. I've got Spider, which you've, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen Spider, great work in Spider, but now you've got this other thing called Jupyter, and we're going to look at that. So Jupyter allows you to create a notebook. And it's like, what is a notebook? Well, suppose you're actually solving a real engineering problem. You're probably going to sit down with a piece of paper and write out the problem, or write out the variables, and do all those things. Well, guess what? Jupyter lets you do all that. So if you were in Jupyter and you were, um, and if you if you go to the menu and you run Jupyter, first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get this uh, DOS looking window right here that tells you that it's up and running. But what it's doing is that's just showing you what's going on in the background because Jupyter is really running here on my local host inside of a browser and that's where you actually do the notebooks, which is kind of neat. So if I were going to create a new workbook, I'd hit here new and I'd hit here new Python 3 and I'm not going to do it because I've already got one. And it's going to create a file called um, basically default, but you can change the name of it, but it's got this extension IPYNB. But let's look at what that actually is. So I've got this thing here, and I'm going to go ahead and open it. Oh, by the way, I think I've got it open twice. Let me close it here. So I've got it open right here. And what you're going to notice, now this one's already created, but what you're going to notice is you've got right here a window that looks like the Python console. And you know why it does? Well, it's because it's what it is. It's a Python console. Now, I'm going to create a note. I've created a notebook right here, but I'm going to, I've got everything open so you can see how everything works. So the first thing in my notebook was, I've got a problem I want to solve. And the problem right here is from a book. It's right there. As you can see in front of me, there it all is, all worked out by hand. I don't want to work it out by hand. I'm going to work it out with Python. But I need, because this is a notebook, I want to have the statement of the problem. So up here in my in, my, my Python in, I've got, I put this percent percent HTML, which by the way defines that everything below that is going to be HTML, hypertext markup language. And because I'm actually pretty good at working in HTML, I was easily able to use HTML tags to output some information, including an image that I scanned from the original problem. So now, if you look at this, this looks like what you would see as a real problem. An actual, here is a boat circling a ship using a tracking radar. The speed of the boat is 20 knots. It is circling the ship at a distance of one nautical mile as shown. Using, um, you've got a radar system that's tracking the boat. You've got an actual feedback loop diagram of the radar system. And we want to keep the, uh, the, the, the boat within a tracking of no lot greater than 0.1 degree air. If this is your feedback system loop, then what does the K need to be? I am not going to go into feedback and network systems. That's a totally different class. I am, however, going to solve this problem, but we're going to solve this looking at just some of the features that you've got within, um, within Python and Jupyter. I'm going to assume in this case that you actually know how to solve feedback loop problems. If you don't, don't worry about it because I'm just really demonstrating some of the capabilities that you've got within Python to be able to solve any kind of problem, mostly using Jupyter and also dealing with units. So the first thing, if you look at this problem, as an engineer is looking at the problem, you'll notice that you've got information in knots, which is not typically, aha, no pun intended, is not typically a set of units that you work within in nautical miles. So I am going to bring in a uh, one of the, the nice toolkit libraries that goes with Python called Pint. Now you may actually have to go in and um, if you, if you try to import Python and you can't find it, you may have to actually go to a, um, a browser, uh, I'm sorry, a DOS window and go ahead and go through the steps of importing it. I've got all that information on the website for my students. You can easily look all this up. So once you've imported this uh, toolkit called Pint, which allows you to do units, I've now got the ability to 
track things with units. So I import pint and I set up a unit registry, which I'm going to call u, and that's just for simplicity. So the unit registry of pint. And now my velocity that I'm starting with is 20 knots. Notice I've got a value and I've got a unit. So that's how you do it. 20 times unit knots is how you actually set up velocity with units. Because if you look at the problem up here, the speed of the boat is 20 knots. So my velocity of my boat is 20 knots. Now I'm going to show you a few things with this. Now that I've set up this velocity to have units, I can print this out. So the, velo the boat velocity is equal to velocity, which by the way, prints out now as 20 knot. It's 20 knots, but you know what I'm saying. And, and actually I could have put knot in here and it still would have worked. And look what I can do here, velocity dot two u miles over u hours. So it will do the unit conver conversion to convert the knots into miles per hour. And that's just built in. <clears throat> now, as part of the problem, we're going to have to do some things here. And this is just solving the problem that you've got. Now, going back to the problem, we know that the radius of the boat that's actually circling the other boat is one, nautic is one nautical mile. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how long does it take to do a revolution. That's something I need to do to solve the problem. So the radius, I need to first bring in uh, NumPy because I'm going to be using some of the capability of NumPy. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know exactly what NumPy is. So I set up the radius to be one nautical mile. Um, the radius, I output the radius here is one nautical mile. The revolution time is going to be two pi uh, r over v. Okay, that's the circumference over the velocity. And I can set up the revolution time to be in seconds, which is now I've got the revolution time. That's how long it takes for the small boat to go around the big boat. And I can convert that into an angular velocity of velocity in radians per second that's just 2 pi over the revolution time and that angular velocity is 0 0.0055 radians per second because I can actually now using the fact that this actually has units I've got the ability to convert it to radians per second and output the angular velocity in radians per second. Wow! All that with units. Now as far as solving the problem, you're just going to take my word for it that I need to calculate the angular velocity. It's very important because angular velocity is going to be used in the solution. Now, I am going to show you uh, just a quick, straight to the point, how do you calculate the K? So here's some uh, for the type of system that we're dealing with right here and the actual function, that is the feedback loop function, which you can see right here. Okay, I can then do a little bit of mathematics behind the scene, a little bit of calculus behind the scenes, and come up with that the um, ESS, which is equal to the, um, I'm actually going to be solving for the K. A is angular velocity, so I've got the, uh, the air, which is ESS, that's the air, which is going to be, by the way, the air in the radians and the degree air that we have right here. And remember, I had everything else in radians, uh, which is 0.1 degree air. That air is going to be equal to 4 times the angular velocity over k, and I'm solving for k. But notice that I was able to use HTML to put this stuff up on the screen. So the point being, not how to solve the problem, the point being is that if you need to throw those equations up and you've got the ability in Python to output some HTML, then that makes it nice and easy to read this information right here to see what are the, ver the equations that you're using. So, the ESS is equal to 0.1 degrees. Remember I set up there in the problem statement that the air was 0.1 degrees. That's 0.1 times u degrees. Remember u was set up in pint as a unit registry, which means that I've got the ability to assign units to any of the numbers that I'm creating. So, 0.1 degrees. K is equal to 4 times the angular velocity over this air which I've actually calculated right here from the equation that I derived up here, um, but I didn't show you the derivation because that's really beyond the scope of what we're doing. So I can then calculate k, and I want to print the k out, and k's units are inverse seconds, so I want to print out the k in the inverse seconds, 12.7 inverse seconds. Now, what did you just see? Well, one is, if you know how to solve these kinds of problems, you're going to go and say, wow, all those units 
just became easy. What did I do? I first used Jupiter to set up a notebook of being able to solve the problem. And why would this be important? Well, it's important because what if I decide instead, then it being 20 knots, it's now 30 knots, okay, I can run that, which then allows me to run that, which then allows me to run that, and all those numbers, as I go through each individual one, all those numbers then change. So I've got an interactive notebook that solves this type of problem with any type of number changes that I want to make. That in itself is incredibly powerful because it's a true interactive notebook. And by the way, I could have run all the cells at one time, or all the ones below, or all the ones above. It didn't matter because I've got that in my menu. I just went through individually and hit run, 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 run on each of the individual ones so you could see as the problem progressed. Okay, what else did I do? Well, I imported a, a, a Python toolkit called Pint. And I set up a unit registry. Pint allows you to assign units to numbers. And now I didn't have to go through the 15 steps down here to go ahead and just, to just dealing with units. And you know, as an engineer, dealing with units is one of the things you do all the time. Pint is extremely rich, and the unit registries are extremely rich in the numbers of, of the different kinds of units that you can accept and work with. So I took care of all the units in one fell swoop. And at the same time, I've got all this in a workbook that I can now very easily get to and process right here through my Jupyter, through my main uh, Jupyter window, um, be able to see all the different kinds of workbooks that I might have set up. So I've got a real practical, real-time problem-solving system easily set up that's live with real units and real numbers that I can change on the fly and be able to solve this type of problem. Hopefully this will give you some ideas of how to start going about solving real engineering problems using Python and Jupyter. So good programming if you're in the EGN 3214. Yes, you're going to see this for real in a lot of your assignments. You're going to start solving some real engineering problems. But I'm going to give you problems that are probably in an area that you will have some familiarity with. Um, I don't know how many people have taken network analysis, but I know all of you have been taking things like statics and PLCs and those. So start expecting those kinds of problems. And I'm also going to give you videos on more advanced problems. Thank you very much and good programming.